Some time ago I created a very simple artificial intelligence for my game, Dead End. This kind of AI is usually called an expert system, where every decision flow needs to be well thought out and is predefined. For a simple game, this works well, but I don't think this does justice to the term artificial intelligence. This is why I decided to explore the application of neural networks, which are very flexible tools that can be applied in countless situations. Neural networks try to imitate the functioning of neurons, where we have several connections between elements that process information. The idea is already old, but in the last decade it took off, with the help of better access to databases and ever-increasing processing power availability. Neural networks are everywhere nowadays. A neural network usually has an input layer where different parameters are entered and an output layer which displays the results and in between we have one or more hidden layers which have no direct access to the data but are responsible for most of the processing. An element in one layer usually connects to all elements in the subsequent layer and each one of those connections has a weight which indicates the strength of the connection. So our neuron receives data from all neurons of the previous layer with the sum of all values multiplied by the respective weights and adding a bias, but before passing the calculated values to the next layer, the results still go through an activation function, which introduces non-linearity in the computations. In the case of the output layer, the calculation is a bit more complex, where the probabilities for each class are calculated, usually with a special activation function. The neural network learns as examples are shown to it, where the weights and biases are adjusted to get the correct output for most examples, which is a relatively complex process. When you have never worked with neural networks, this can be intimidating, but you don't need to understand how it works to learn how to use it. Many techniques are already well established and come ready to use in libraries. In a way, it is a very interesting subject to try to understand. Python is an excellent language to learn how to use neural networks and other types of models. Having several dedicated libraries, from the more user-friendly scikit-learn to the more advanced ones like PyTorch and TensorFlow. Besides that, there are many tutorials on YouTube about the subject. I strongly recommend the channel Sendex, which in my opinion has the best content about neural networks. The guy even wrote a book about how to program neural networks from scratch in Python, without using libraries. Well, I will start small. As a warm-up, using the scikit-learn library to train a classification neural network that will mimic the expert system I created. But before that, I need to collect some data. The enemies have three possible states, normal, aggressive and frightened. These are based on different parameters of the game. The enemy's health, the presence of other enemies, the distance to the player, if you can see or hear the player, the enemy type, if it is a zombie or a skeleton, and if the cooldown of its attack has passed. The actions of the enemy depend only on these three states, so the AI won't tell exactly what the enemy is going to do, only how it feels. This simplifies things a lot. To collect the data, I created a list of lists that keeps all these values, then played some levels of the game, and in the end it exports everything to a CSV file with this numpy function. Now I can train the model. To start I will import the MLP classifier, which is the multi-layer perceptron classifier. I will also import the feature of dividing my data into training and test datasets. That is, to know if the model is working. Part of the data is reserved for testing. And with this feature it is very convenient to do so. I will use pandas just to read the CSV file and create a data frame. Pandas is like Excel with storage to manipulate data in Python. The capital X represents the inputs and the lowercase y represents the outputs. 60% of the data will be used to train the model and the remaining will be reserved for testing. The model configuration is a little more difficult to understand as there are several hyperparameters that can be adjusted. I'm using some of the standard ones here, but one of the most important ones, in my opinion, is the configuration of the hidden layers. Here in the first layer I have 7 input parameters, so the first layer has 7 elements and the output can take on three different values, so it has three elements. So I decided to use a single five element hidden layer, since it is on the midpoint between seven and three. 
I test it with more layers and more elements, but the performance does not improve much. In some cases, it even worsens. Now I can train the model with the training data and in the end evaluate its performance with the test data. Here I got an average accuracy of 82%. That is, this neural network can imitate my expert system 8 times out of 10. Not bad, but not perfect. With the model ready, I can apply it to my game. And to avoid having to train the model every time I am going to play, I save it to a pickle file. In the game, I load the trained model to apply it to the input parameters, thus defining the state of each enemy. The model works fine. The enemies try to attack the player and sometimes try to run away from him. But it's not that great. It is trying to imitate the previous AI, which was already very simplistic, and it cannot even imitate it perfectly. So there is no way the neural network can work better by just training with this data. Ideally, I would play the role of the enemy when collecting the data, but then I would first need an artificial intelligence to control the player, which complicates things a bit. Another option is the application of genetic algorithms, creating several variations of the model and evolving those that work best via natural selection. But for this I think I will also have to create an AI for the player, so that I don't have to manually run several generations. There is also the reinforcement learning approach, which seems even more complicated. Anyway, this will have to wait for another video. I'm not sure yet what the next step will be, but thanks for watching and until the next time. Tschüss.